Hello, my name is Jacob Avila of 5 Minute Sono, and today we're going to talk about how to evaluate a patient for an aortic aneurysm using your ultrasound. Your probe of choice is going to be the curvilinear transducer for anything in the belly and your phased array transducer for anything in the chest. Now, the phased array transducer definitely can work in the belly as well, but you're not going to get as good of a resolution as you would with a curvilinear transducer. So the aorta, you can pretty much evaluate the entire thing. Easy to see the root of the aorta and very easy to see the abdominal aorta. Occasionally, you can get the arch and the descending aorta. They're a little bit harder to get, but they are possible. In the thoracic aorta, the size that is considered abnormally enlarged is around four to four and a half centimeters. The size basically goes down as you get down into the abdominal aorta. If you want to be super accurate, there actually are nomograms to use that correlate the body surface area with the size of the aorta. However, most of us don't have the time to do this. Let's start with the thoracic aorta. So we have a parasternal long axis view over here. Over here, you see that this ascending aorta is just massive, really big aortic dilation there. This is an apical five chamber view. The fifth chamber right here is the aorta. And you can see here, this is normal. You usually can't see a whole lot of it past the valve. Over here, we have an abnormally enlarged ascending aorta. It's actually about the same size as that left atrium there. Now let's talk about the abdominal aortic aneurysm. So if you have trouble remembering what the abnormally enlarged number is, AAA is three numbers, three centimeters is considered abnormally enlarged. Many places state to look at the abdominal aorta and measure it at its most proximal mid and just above the iliac bifurcation. If your patient has a AAA greater than five centimeters, that is considered very abnormal. That is somebody that needs an emergent surgery compared to a patient that has one that is less than five centimeters. It has to do with the dilation and Laplace's law. Basically, the bigger it gets, the thinner and more friable the wall of the aorta gets, making it more likely to rupture. So here is how you do the examination. Place that probe in the epigastric area, and you should get an image that looks a little bit like this. So we have our aorta over here. We have our IVC over here on the left, liver on the left, and the spine. And you want to evaluate this little guy right here. This is the aorta. You want to see how big that is. So you can measure it all the way down, down, down. Now, I'm not going to talk about all the branches of the aorta and everything that's next to it, because really all we want to know is that aorta dilated. And we want to evaluate it from the beginning of the aorta, basically as high up as we can find it, all the way down until we get to the branch of the iliacs which you can see right there it splits. There's one aorta here, and it splits into two iliacs right there. So there's one, there's just another one. So this is an aortic aneurysm, pretty big thing. Now there's something you have to realize here. This right here, this has a flow in it. This all is clot. You can't just measure this thing right here. If you just measure this, you'd say, oh, it's two centimeters, it's not a big deal. It's less than that three centimeters. But in fact, you gotta measure outer wall to outer wall. And you can see that this is actually a very big seven centimeter aneurysm. Up until this point, we've only been talking about fusiform aneurysms, which are the most common by far. Saccular aneurysms definitely occur, and the reason why it's important to scan the entire aorta. So here is an aorta right here. Now this is in long axis, this is the heart over here, here's the liver. Now imagine if we had only ultrasounded up to let's say here, we might have missed this little aneurysm that's all the way over here. That's why it's important to scan all the way down. Here's it a little more zoomed in. So this is a saccular aortic aneurysm. And here it is in short axis. You can see it looks pretty normal. And then you get this weird little out pouching right here. Whenever I see something that looks like this, I always turn to the longitudinal just to confirm that it is a saccular aneurysm and not just an ectatic aorta. So to recap, anything greater than about four centimeters in the chest is considered abnormal. Now there's definitely a little bit of a range and you should correlate it with a patient's body surface area if they're kind of on the cusp, kind of on the borderline. But for me, if I'm going to remember one number, it's going to be about four centimeters, but it can be up to four and a half centimeters in patients that have a large body surface area. In the abdomen, basically anything greater than three centimeters is considered abnormal and anything greater than five centimeters is considered very abnormal. That's it for this week's 5 Minutes Sono. Please feel free to send me an email or a tweet. And as always, don't forget to subscribe. Go to blog5 slash subscribe. Put in your name and your email address in the little text boxes and never miss another video. And if you want these podcasts sent directly to your smart devices, go to whatever podcasting service you use, type in 5 Minutes Sono, leave me a rating and a review because I like those, and subscribe.